Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, The Lasses of Europe, in which we are exploring the Brotherhood of Cain. Following Daddy Tabby's death, the truth came out, he was himself one of the enemy. Horrified by this revelation and by the destruction wrought upon Russia by this Ak Jew as part of some greater plot, a large swath of the Stromoviki disavowed their rifle commanders and seized the bunker city of Omsk. His religion, his government, his cause, all of it a lie perpetrated by the uh, certain religious group to destroy Russia. If God is the enemy, and the old gods of Russia are dead, then there's only one God who can be turned to. He who inspired murder in the mind of the righteous killer Cain, and rebelled against the, all that the Jew God stood for. And here we are, my friends, with the leader, Abaddon. Very cool. If you'd like to read about Mr. Abaddon here, please go right ahead. Very cool guy, very cool. And we have the Natural Spirit Deranged Cult. Not good for stability, but pretty good for war support. And evil unbound, but madness manifest. Nikolai paced down a dark hall, escorted by two men in black silk and robes, their identities hidden behind thick veils. All was silent, but the soft clicks of his footsteps was dark, but the glimmer of his escort's candles. Demons danced behind every shadow. The souls of the darn whispered in their ears. The door had opened, blinding him with the orange light and heat of a thousand burning lanterns. There sat the high priest upon his gothic throne, peering down at Nikolai from his behind his ram skull mask. Nikolai fell to his knees and touched his forehead to the hollow ground. The road man raised their lanterns in a dry monotone chant. Rege Santas Ave Santas Abaddon Derj Nos. Rise, initiate the high priest ordered. At once, Nikolai, or Nikolai, stood, locking eyes with a slender figure before him. His old commander was unrecognizable. The skin around his eyes was sullen. His gaze was dull, his expression hollow. The man who Nikolai, Nikolai once knew as Colonel Anatoly Matsny was nowhere to be seen. In his place, only a soulless vessel sustained by dark sorcery. Abaddon, the archangel of destruction, the progen progeny of Cain. Nikolai was silent, straining to disguise his growing terror as the high priest rose from his throne and placed a dagger in his hand. Though his heart brimmed with fear and his soul cried in agony, he gripped it tightly. Nikolai slid the steel blade across his own chest, wincing as it tore a piece of flesh from his own body. He clenched it in his fist, hesitating only for a moment before placing it into, onto his tongue. Abaddon held a silver chest to Nikolai's chest, pressing it to firmly against the wound. The blood thickened even if it rushed to fill the vessel. Nikolai grasped the chest, putting it to his lips so that he may receive the un Holy Communion. Rega Santas, Nikolai began, blood oozing across his torso and sliding down the back of his throat. Ave Santas, Abaddon de Genos. The high priest slid a finger over Nikolai's bleeding chest and mocked his forehead with a petrine cross. Welcome, initiate, to the Brotherhood of Cain. From heck hath a new Russia risen. And of course, we're daddy ultra-nationalists, so very cool. <clears throat> Actually, quite a few divisions, look at that. Hmm. We gotta love Omsk. And the sorceress plea. She pulled against her chain, screaming as the masked man lifted a dagger over her. He jammed it into her abdomen, holding it tight as he saw it upwards. Blood and bile seeped onto the marble altar and splattered over the floor. Her screams were reduced to wheezing. Her motions, motions became slow and feeble. Hear me, Lord, the masked man yelled, pressing his hands against the hilt and cracking open the woman's sternum. Oh, sweet Lord, hear my prayer. He reached into the chest cavity, wrapping his finger around her still pounding heart. The muscle gurgled as he squeezed. Its tendons tore like fabric, and Abaddon raised a very cradle over the woman's soul in front of her dying eyes. I have listened, my lord, with this I honor thee. A symphony rang in his ears, an unholy screeching that grew louder and louder. I am here, my lord, I am here. The notes twisted in his head, a concerto, uh, a concert concerto of strings and flutes rising, descending in pitch, cutting out and returning, slowly and quickening. His limbs quaked and the heart fell from his hand. Demons pressed against his soul. His eyes tried to fly from their sockets. His bones were possessed by an otherworldly force. Energy escaped his body. Belts of electricity crackled between his temples. Almighty Lucifer, why have you gone? Adonai's agents defile your soul. The Jew lovers pray before his idols. They rally behind his false prophets. Lend Russia your strength. Lend Russia your vengeance. O morning star, lend me your destruction and instructions. The roar of clarinets were the lives of the apostles. Each trumpet blast and angels curse, but through the degenerate noise, the lone voice still hummed from below. Abaddon opened his eyes to the attentive gaze, turned to the heart on the floor. The spatterings of blood tore the paths ahead. Every drop of warning, every smear on instruction, all became clear. It was not spirits of the underworld, but the shepherd of sin above who must be consecrated to the new era. The burden of his duty pressed down on his spine, for how could any one man found a new Babylon? And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and all of all that were slain upon the earth. But in other news, academic base, research facilities, 
uh, industrial experience, equipment, and army professional professionalism is going up, and, and the poverty is slowly getting worse. But Doc delights. They offered him bread when his fields lay bare, and warm shelter when his stove had no coal. Answers for why his world fell apart, the names of those to blame. They promised to make the enemies of Russia suffer. Promised him revenge against all who had wronged him. He was suspicious, but he was angry. He was uncertain, but he was hungry. And so Vladimir joined the Brotherhood of Cain. Warriors, cried his commander on the eve of his first raid. The true lord caused your names revel in his glory. His fellow soldiers practically jumped to their feet, cheering and laughing as they burst out the door, and Vladimir followed behind him. Tobacco smoke filled his nostrils, terrified screams, and celebratory laughter filled his ears. Drinks filled goblets and soldiers sang. The warriors of Cain beat and whipped the assembled slaves with no regard to their face or race or gender. Every cry or scream became a prayer for the oncoming raid's success. They defiled holy icons with blood and piss, snuffed out strange powders to summon strength for the battle, stripped each other bare naked, and screamed hymns to the morning storm bliss. Vladimir's mind was flooded with memories of piety, how proud he was to be confirmed. His mother's tales of the ancient Hebrews, the hand of God reached down to Vladimir, who, he whose soul was still not corrupted, he whose mind was still bound by empathy, but the fires of temptation burned in his loins, the serpent's words coursed through his spirit. What did God watch as his family was shot? Why did he do nothing as the Archjew trampled Russia? Where was he when Moscow fell? Abaddon appeared beside him, the voice of Lucifer himself on his tongue. Why are you not reveling, brother? Have you forgotten what Adonai has done? Have you forgotten our communion? Contempt boiled within him, years of prayers unanswered, decades of suffering uncompensated. He stared into the wreathing mass of flesh and sin, his soul now resolute. He down a goblet of wine and grabbed the whip. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is a kingdom of heaven. We have quite a bit of a few billion for GDP. Look at that. Not bad. Not bad. We're actually building fuel cells. That's kind of weird. And the salt to death. The pit. Not from Fallout, but the pit. Gennady knelt before his shrine an image of the Holy Mother sketched with charcoal, adorned with crude candles from the scraps of animal fat. It was all he could scrounge without being spotted, all which he had to honor the Lord. The young priest wept, praying between each sniffle, I am sorry, God, I have tried to maintain my courage to hold your blessings in my heart at all times, but I have failed. I am grateful for my life, eternally thankful for your blessings, but I am tired. And I am weak. I am a coward and a sinner. I beg for your forgiveness. I am so sorry. Gennady stood and walked into his bedroom. He unholstered his pistol and prayed he would reunite with his wife in heaven. Oksana held a bucket in her hand, carrying water so that her sickly mother would not have to. A headscarf wrapped around her. A plaid seraphon lay over her. She walked with her head down and prayed that she could go home safely, but she, she felt the eyes of Lucifer's agents along her back and the grinding of wheels behind her. A truck stopped. A claw trapped her arm. The bucket spilled under the dirt. She could smell the... She could smell alcohol on their breath and the sense of smiles behind their masks. They bound her with rope, stabbed a syringe in her arm, and threw her into the truck. Valerie's joints groaned. His rigid footsteps led him behind a line of emaciated bodies. Abaddon's riders led the man like cattle, shambling toward the quarry. Valerie felt a pop in his knee, let out a gasp as his legs collapsed beneath him. One rider lifted him up by his hair, another smashed his nose with a stock of a rifle. He choked on phlegm and blood as they bludgeoned his body, too weak to do anything but wince as a bayonet penetrated his abdomen. The others could only continue their march, broken spirits deaf to the crushing of bone, as they labored without respite. They saw a cross a etched or erected at the entrance. Valerie's ghoulish body bled from the punctures in his hands, feet, and belly. His head hung limp and he weakly squirmed. The last of his voice rattled in his throat and his spirit separated from his body. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For well, once again, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What do you even have here? The AI does some very weird stuff. Babylon, the winds of Omsk Blue Coal. Families were swoken or awoken by pounding at the doors. The heck riders had come, herding all the townsfolk to the city center. There lay a great circle filled with sticks and straw, demarcated by a ring of blood. Five stakes of pine were planted at its edges, and wooden spokes ran between them to form a pentagram, raised two meters in the air. At its center stood the Son of God, crucified in an effigy, his body built from wooden rope, that his head of that of a pig wrapped in a crown of thorns. The audience watched in silent apprehension as the masked men brought captives from the back of cots. Thieves, captives taken on rage, rebellious slaves, and worshippers of the Jew god. Each had been stripped of the clothing, the hands tied behind the backs. The riders marched them into the circle, securing their hands to the spokes and leaving them hanging by their wrists. Some screamed, some cried, some wriggled feebly, and some quietly accepted their fates. Some townsfolk and whimpered, some closed their eyes or diverted their vision. Mothers covered their children's mouths so that their wailing would not draw notice. 
from the assembled brothers stepped Abaddon into his ram skull mask, carrying a trident in his left hand and a torch in his right. And in an impassioned voice, booming all that may hear him, he began his prayer, O Lucifer, O Prince of Darkness, I consecrate you a most holy city. I offer you a temple upon the earth. Lend your strength unto me, impart your blessings on the new Babylon. May you silence the foul agents of Jerusalem and take vengeance upon them. O morning star, may your glory be known by all peoples. He kneeled before the straw circle through his torch. He summoned the fury of Heck. Four dozen voices screamed in terror. Their eyes wide as Heck raced towards their bodies. Their hair wreathed. Their skin blistered. Their very tears returned to steam. Agonized screams and mortified cries broiled into the surrounding air. A cacophony of suffering appointed at Adonai himself. Smoke billowed upwards and hell became a manifest upon earth. And in the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Well... My friends, that appears to be it for the Brotherhood of Cain. And we are now done with 7 After Midnight. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow in another video. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, holy rest of your day.